Hello, I'm JW, and this is the third and final part in the series on the Astra BT311 multiway adapter, or movable socket if you believe the writing on the back. And if you haven't seen the two videos in this series previously, then those links are in the description section below. Now, in this video, the main thing we'll be doing is checking the current this thing can actually take. And we're going to do that outside because there's a fairly high probability of it melting or setting on fire or doing other unwanted things. So we'll be going outside in a moment. Now, unfortunately, it's quite windy outside today, which uh, in one way will uh, carry away any smoke and pollution. But of course, there may be a bit of wind noise on the recording. So uh, let's go outside and see what we can do. Now, here's the test setup. We've got the mains coming in here and via the clamp meter so we can display the current on the display there. It goes to this ceramic block and then I've had to solder on some extra wires here because it was impossible to get the original flex to actually stay into the terminal there. And inside the adapter, I've created a short circuit fault. So we'll get basically a short through there. Here I've got a thermocouple probe just inserted inside the outer white covering, and that will display the temperature over here in degrees centigrade. So let's uh, switch on the current and uh, see how hot it gets. So that's about 5 amps, uh, which is about half of the alleged rating of this thing. Uh, remember this was rated to 10 amps allegedly, so uh, it should be able to cope with 10 amps, no problem. So we'll start at half of that. Uh, as you see, the temperature is already climbing to uh, 32 Celsius there. So we'll leave that running for a few moments to see where the temperature gets to. Okay, well that's now holding about sort of 66. So let's increase the current to say 8 amps, which is still below the rating of the device. Okay, we're just over 8 amps or 8.35 there, and you see the temperature is climbing rapidly. We're now up to 80 centigrade. That's uh, exceeding the rating for standard PVC insulation, which is normally around 70. Temperature increasing significantly to 90 there. This cable will now be far too hot to even touch. As you can see, it's got this rather strange rubbery look to it. And uh, certainly wouldn't want to be uh, touching that. Temperature now exceeding 100 Celsius or centigrade, whichever you like around the 8 amps and again you'll notice the current is falling off because of the uh, increased resistance of those wires. Now the temperature is already at 137 uh, centigrade and the current is still just about 7.9 amps. I just smell the hot PVC odour coming off of the equipment. The temperature is still increasing and again bear in mind this is only 7.8 amps or a load of circa 2 kilowatts equipment at the mains voltage and uh, this is supposed to be rated to 10 so this is still well within the alleged rating of the device. Okay, the temperature has now reached 161 centigrade. Uh, this uh, is going to be uh, far too hot to touch and will cause a uh, severe burn injury if uh, someone did actually uh, touch the thing. And so we're only running this at about uh, say 7.8 amps or just under 8 amps there well within the rating that it claimed. See the installation is very uh, really soft and uh, gungy looking. The temperature is still increasing, coming up to 180 Celsius there. I think we'll increase the current to the rated 10 amps of the device and see uh, what temperature we get to then. So they were just under the 10 amps mark. Uh, temperature is now rising substantially quickly at 213 there. Again, this is centigrade, double the boiling point of water already. And this is the uh, same amount of 10 amps, which is what this thing is rated to. See smoke coming out of the insulation there. 240. Riding up 200 and uh, coming up to 250. You see there's smoke coming out of the uh, insulation here where there's obviously some kind of hot spot occurred. Now the 
temperature continues to increase, 264. rising to 80. Test there, the temperature now reached 300 Celsius, so uh, we'll be turning off. And I see the temperature now dropping rapidly now that the current has been disconnected. You're paying mind this flex is just laying here out in the open. It's the, uh, really the best possible case for uh, cooling. I see it's starting to stick to the uh, surface here. As you see, it's uh, disintegrating and melting in the most disgusting way possible. So here there's multiple faults along the cable here where it's uh, starting to smoke and uh, give off toxic gases. As you can see, we haven't actually overloaded this, that was only 10 amps, uh, which is what the thing was supposed to be rated for. Depending on these incoming wires here are uh, the sort of size that they should have been. This incoming flex here is not even warm to the touch yet. Now here on the side, just have a look at this uh, awful mess. Uh, as you can see, the cable has melted and failed in a number of places here. This is where it actually stuck to the surface out there. And uh, it's a complete disaster. That's the cut where I had the thermocouple inserted. And uh, as you can see there, the inner insulation is totally wrecked. It's gone uh, black and has uh, basically started to disintegrate into a crumbly dusty mess. Bearing in mind these should be the uh, green and other colours in there and if I try and pull the wires out of it as you can see there the, the whole lot is just crumbling to dust. It's totally destroyed. And that was only with a current of 10 amps which was the uh, alleged rating of the device. So even if it had a 10 amp fuse in or was attached to a 10 amp circuit it would have still uh, basically melted like this and uh, caused a severe fault. Now the thing itself, uh, as you can see on the back here, the uh, cable temperature is such that it's actually melted through the back of the plastic casing. And again, if we just uh, go in there, we can see that it's again the same dusty and disintegrating mess that uh, we had before. And again, here on the cable, you've got the areas where it's obviously been uh, melted through and on the point of disintegrating. And the whole thing is now a horrible, crunchy and disgusting mess. Uh, notice however that these wires which I had to solder on to the uh, ones that it was supplied with, mainly because it was impossible to attach any kind of terminals to them. Uh, these are the uh, tails here, which were carrying that 10 amps as well, and you see, totally undamaged. No problem at all there, and this is uh, only uh, 0.75 millimeter flex, so pretty small again, but uh, took that uh, current no problem. There's a bit of a melt there, because it was resting on one of the white insulation material. As you can there, and as you can see here, even at the soldered connections in this end, it's again totally disintegrating and has uh, crumbled away into a basically a crusty and uh, crunchy mess. Now, Zapro DK suggested we should test the wires with a magnet, so here's a magnet. You can see it uh, sticks to the steel screwdriver there, no problem. So, uh, here's the wires, so let's see if they are attracted to it or not. And I've got some of the inner 
conductor, it's not copper, it's some kind of other substance, and the wires here. So uh, let's just see if they are attracted to the magnet or not. Well, it appears that they are not. No, it's definitely not a uh, ferrous material. And here's the wires themselves, and as you can see, there's no uh, particular attraction there whatsoever. Let's place it there and get these inner conductors. No, so it doesn't appear to be a uh, steel or other ferrous material in there. So we'll assume therefore that they are in fact uh, aluminium. No, nothing there at all. I'll say with the screwdriver here, as you see it, uh, it's easily attracted to the uh, magnet there, but the uh, wires, of course, uh, are not. Now, another comment on uh, YouTube was from the Chipmunk 2008, and they uh, suggested we should see if it's flammable or not. So uh, I've got some uh, another piece of this uh, flex, which we can uh, do a test on. So we'll see if the uh, three individual inside conductors are flammable, and also the uh, white outside covering. And uh, this is obviously now totally wrecked, so I may as well just uh, put a flame on this as well and see if this uh, burns or not. So obviously we'll do that uh, outside. Now I've got the uh, wires just hanging up there, just the three inner conductors and also a piece of the white outer covering. And we'll just apply a flame to these. And of course what should happen is that they may well burn initially, but when the flame is removed, the wires themselves should self-extinguish within a couple of seconds. So uh, let's just put the flame on there and see what happens. Of course, when the heat source or ignition source is removed, what's supposed to happen is that the flame will self-extinguish after a few seconds. As you can see here, it's continuing to burn readily, and in fact it's actually getting larger there. Also bearing in mind it's quite windy out here, so uh, the wind ought to be assisting with extinguishing the flame. But of course, as you can see, the flame continues to grow in size. This material clearly is very far from flame retardant. So that is the end of the Astra BT311 adapter. Clearly no one will be using that again. Now the current used in that test, uh, just to uh, reiterate, was only 10 amps, which was the alleged rating of the device, as it clearly stated 10 amps on the back of the packaging, and obviously uh, 2,500 watts. Now that's only a sort of one fan heater or something in fact, or uh, obviously a range of smaller devices, so that was well within its uh, alleged operating capability. And yet as we saw, the temperature of the flex exceeded 300 degrees Celsius, and obviously started to smoke and disintegrate. 
And as for the flammability, the individual cores and the outer white covering uh, weren't too bad. I mean, they did obviously burn with the flame there, but when the flame was removed, they uh, did extinguish after a uh, few seconds. However, the actual adapter itself, uh, made of that sort of hard and fairly brittle plastic, which, uh, bearing in mind, claimed on the packaging to be uh, non-flammable and so on, clearly uh, burned very easily, and even when the flame was removed, it actually would have continued burning until the whole thing had burnt away. And even I slung a bit of water on it, certain parts of it still continued to burn afterwards. So uh, clearly that is a huge fail, and uh, obviously that's not the kind of thing which you should make electrical items from. Now, uh, obviously, uh, we're not going to be uh, doing out with that particular adapter, but uh, if you have actually got one of those or have bought it, then the only sensible thing to do, of course, is to destroy it and dispose of it. Certainly, do not consider using it. So, until the next video, thanks for watching.